So I'm Nikki Gerrard and I'm co-founder of John's campaign and in the spirit of the way the campaign has been run we're sharing the chairing so I am going to be chairing this morning's session and then Julia Jones will chair this afternoon's session. Um, we are enormously grateful to Imperial College Healthcare NHS Trust not just for generously hosting this conference but also for the way they've been a flagship for John's campaign and so it's my Great pleasure and honour to introduce <coughs> Professor Janice Sigsworth, its Director of Nursing. Gosh, that all sounds very grand, doesn't it? Goodness me. Well, I'm delighted to uh, welcome you to Imperial today. Um, as Nikki says, I'm, I'm Janice Sigsworth and I'm the Chief Nurse. And when I explain to people, particularly my mum, uh, what that means, just think, if you're as old as me, Hattie Jakes... Um, or Barbara Windsor. I'm the top matron um, of the Imperial Group. An Imperial Group is the Hammersmith Hospital where you are today, Charing Cross Hospital in Fulham, Western Eye Hospital on the Euston Road, and St Mary's in Paddington. We see over a million outpatients a year. We deliver round about 9,000 babies. A couple of them were royal, as you know, in the last couple of years. We see 300,000 patients, uh, many of them elderly and frail, in our accident and emergency departments. We're very pleased to be working and to have worked with John's campaign and to be hosting today. You've got a stellar star cast of presenters and discussions and thinking, and I think you'll find it a very inspiring experience. The John's campaign founders are Nikki and Julia. Um, they started the campaign after Nikki's father, John, was in hospital for an extended period um, and, and really struggled, I think, to cope to get back to the level of living that he'd had prior to that hospital experience. Imperial's relationship started with John's campaign when Joe saw Nikki on the Andrew Marr show and got in touch. We already had a carer's passport, which was a little card that gave families, friends and relatives permission to stay with their elderly relatives with dementia on our inpatient wards. That concept's now embedded in practice as usual in Imperial, and we're very proud of that. So it seems really natural for us to host the conference today. I first met Nikki and Julia with Jo and, and found them a breath of fresh air. I, I get to do lots of lovely um, things in my job and lots of things that are really tricky and difficult. And meeting Julia and Nikki was an inspiration. I was very fortunate to have Jo in our team, who also has done fantastic work from the ground with the clinical staff at the bedside, improving care for patients with dementia. I have to lead the professional contribution that nurses and midwives make in Imperial. And the best thing about working with Jo is I don't have to do anything around dementia care because she's done it all on her own with her team. Um, and that really is testimony to the fact that she's a fantastic dementia care nurse. Uh, so don't anyone here today try and steal her from me, otherwise <laughs> you'll be in trouble. We did steal her from another hospital up the road, actually. I, think I hope they're not here today. Uh, I heard about Jo an awful lot before she got here, and she's lived up to every expectation. So working with John's campaign has been a lovely mixture of learning, personal stories from patients and their families, uh, meeting carers, and really embedding that in the way that we deliver uh, care to the patients at Imperial, and that the patient and their family is central to that care. So have a great day. I've got to go off, unfortunately, for a couple of hours to a really boring management meeting that I can't get out of. Um, but I will be back around about lunchtime and with you um, for the rest of the day. Thank you. So... First of all, I'm really pleased that my mother, Patricia, is here with us today. Um, she lived with... <laughs> she was married to my father for over 61 years, and not a day goes by now when she doesn't miss him, but she endured his drawn-out goodbye with enormous love and courage. In fact, courage is her middle name, so... <laughs> So she's welcome. Um, right. John's campaign. John's campaign began with a sorrow that cannot now be changed 
or rescued. Let's say my father, John Gerard, was an honourable, modest, sweet-natured man who had a good life and after a spell in hospital that finally unravelled him so that he was lost to us and to himself, a long, sad dying. But this campaign is not about sorrow and it is about change and about rescue. So the campaign began in Julia's kitchen, two emotional middle-aged women saying it shouldn't have to be like this. But it's not a campaign of two women now, it's a small part of a great movement for more enlightened care, um, made up of people who live with dementia, heroic carers, wonderful overworked nurses and doctors and social workers and therapists of charities and other organisations, of individuals up and down the country, some of whom are here today, who have tirelessly and with a generosity that brings a lump to my throat when I think of it, helped us on our journey, have encouraged us, advised us, supported us and joined us. It's not a campaign that's against anything. It's a campaign that's for something. It's not about guilt or blame. It's about enlightened, empathetic, practical solutions. It has no individual enemies and it has many friends. It's a campaign whose aim seems simple, that the carers of people who live with dementia should have the same right to accompany them in hospital as parents do with sick children, or put it the other way around, that people who live with dementia have the right to be so accompanied. For as we've learned, hospital is a very hazardous place for people with dementia. But if it's simple, it also opens a door onto a more joined up, transparent, coherent, empathetic way of treating a person with dementia in hospital, treating them as a person, not just as a patient, <coughs> treating them as human and infinitely precious. Um, over the last couple of years, I've learned lots of new acronyms and phrases, and one of these is cost neutral. So I've learned to say, John's campaign is cost neutral, but its value is incalculable. And I've been learning a lot about cost, because as most people in this room know, the cost of dementia is vast. And I'm not talking now about its financial cost, although there, there's that too, of course. I'm talking about its human cost to people who live with it and to the people who love them and care for them. The kind of dementia brings with it so much fear. There is so much uncertainty and so much loneliness, so much humiliation, so much deep sorrow around dementia sometimes. Um, there is so much loss around dementia. But I've also learned a great deal about value. And I'm talking now about the value in care of relationships, of stories and poetry and music, of respect and dignity and empathy, of the extraordinary kindness of strangers that we have come across, and of the heroism of family and friends, and above all, of the value of each person right up to the moment of their death. So this conference today is about the journey of the campaign, why it was needed, where it's got to, and ways forward into a future where it will be unimaginable that there was ever once a time that carers were not made fully welcome to accompany people who are vulnerable at their time of greatest need. And now I'm gonna hand you over to my valiant friend and unflaggingly determined co-campaigner, Julia. I think the first thing that I want to say is I wish my mum was here. And thank you, Pat, 
for coming, and thank you, everybody, who is bringing other people in your hearts with you who can't actually be here today. Now, my mother, June, is 92. She lives with Alzheimer's and vascular dementia. She, I think it's a double whammy, really, of age and illness, and that's why she can't be here. But on her 92nd birthday, um, Nikki sent a friend down to um, make a little video of Mum. So I thought if Mum herself can't be here, perhaps we could have her in her video, which I think Sean has got at the back there. And the context of it is that Mum didn't want us to be running a campaign that was about her, of which she was not a part. Um, so very early in the campaign, we were lucky enough to go and visit Jeremy Hughes at the Alzheimer's Society. And we were terribly excited about this, as one might very well be. Um, and I was sitting with Mum, and I said, we're going off to these people in London. She said, but is this about me? And I said, well, yes, Mum, it is. And she said, well, in that case, you know, I think I should be writing a letter or doing something. So she did. I think you will find Mum's letter in your Voices booklet. But the video, um, which Nikki commissioned for Mum's 92nd birthday, shows Mum's um, conversation about her and her letter. So I hope you'll allow Mum to be here remotely, even if she can't be here in person. Do we have the video? There are more than 850,000 people with dementia in the UK. People with dementia occupy one in four hospital beds. One third of people with dementia who go into hospital for an unrelated condition never return to their own homes. I came across John's campaign, which was founded by Nikki Gerrard and Julia Jones, and I went to Woodbridge to meet Julia and her mother June on her 92nd birthday. Nikki's father had a thing called Alzheimer's, which is the same oh, as you've got. Wow, well, I've got it. You have. Oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Check, get your thing out. <laughs> it's one of those things that does happen to a lot of people now. Yes. Particularly well, most old. Most of us. I don't know about most, but it's getting on for most. Most old, many old people have yes. Alzheimer's or something like that. Yes. Nikki wrote an article in the newspaper about her father and about oh. how, how he, how he went into hospital. You see, um, perfectly able to you know sit in his garden and yes, you know, yes, talk to his family and you know yeah. read and do nice things, and he came out of hospital because his family weren't allowed to be there with him and he'd forgotten how to do all those things. She got hundreds and hundreds of letters and people saying, yes, that happened to my father. Oh, yes, or that it fairly ballooned. It did, it yes. did. And because Nikki knew it was your birthday, she wrote you a lovely letter saying, I'm sorry I haven't written this letter to you before because you have been such a supporter of John's campaign and such a help. Whenever I am tired and I wonder why we're doing this, I think of you and I know. The letter you wrote is like our flag. More than yes. thousands of articles could ever do, it shows why our campaign what, is necessary. What about the that, that's the letter you wrote. Oh. Yes. I wrote. You no wrote. Letters, no, you did. Yeah. No, no, you wrote. Did you you yeah. did, yes. And luckily you had the sense you started your letter to whom it may concern. And that, yes. and, and that was cause, probably because we didn't know his name. Yeah. But it yeah. also meant that, that I've been allowed to show it to all sorts of people, like nurses and doctors. Oh, oh that yes. was a good bit of luck, wasn't it? It was a good bit of luck, wasn't oh, it? Paul? Yes. yes. Are you sure I wrote it? Absolutely certain, actually. Every so often you said, quick, Jewel, how do I spell Alzheimer's? So... <laughs> <laughs> I still don't know. <laughs> no, 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 not many people can spell Alzheimer's. But anyway, we gave it our best shot. We didn't really need it much. No, well, we got we got the message across. Yes, yes. And and there and there was your letter. My letter. Your oh, letter was... to whom it may concern. To whom it may concern. Yes. Yes. My name is June Jones. Oh. I, this was your letter that you wrote. Oh, read. I see. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I am. I am ninety oh. years old. I suffer from Alzheimer's. I what? I suffer from Alzheimer's. Yes. If I have to stay in hospital for something like a broken bone, how could I manage? 
who would help me? With my lack of memory and my lack of understanding, how would I know how to call how to call a nurse and explain my trouble. Yes. Yeah, that, that was a really good point. How would I know how to call the nurse and explain my trouble? For my first time in hospital, I would be very frightened. Yes. Please may my daughter stay with me. So that's, so that's mum, um, and I, I will tell her that she was here in some way, um, and I'm sorry she's not here in person. I have found being mum's carer extraordinarily difficult. She doesn't live with me. I think people who um, are caring in their own homes for their relatives with later dementia are absolutely terrific, and I know I couldn't do it. So. I'm not pretending I do it all, but I do take responsibility for mum. And it has been a very deep and strange and difficult process, and it has changed our relationship. And I've, I've, I've written about it in my book um, there, about what a rotten carer I am a lot of the time, and how, <laughs> how difficult mum is a lot of the time, and how we keep you know, struggling through. And I, I decided I, I could um, have a little sort of strap line, because it's sort of like she's, trans she's transferring responsibility, and I'm the keeper of her, her identity in so many ways. And, and as I walked up to the tube this morning, I thought to myself, those whom dementia has joined together, let no man put asunder. <laughs> so thank you very much for that, and that's the beginning. Thank you.